Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian here at the Paris Air Show where we've just completed a flight aboard Embraer's brand new KC-390 tanker transport aircraft. It was the first media flight ever on the airplane. Our coverage here over the course of the week is going to be sponsored by L3 Technologies and Leonardo DRS. The KC-390 is a fascinating program. Brazil launched it. Uh, almost a decade ago. The first flight was in February 2015, and the company has been on a very, very aggressive schedule as it works to deliver the first of 38 aircraft to the Brazilian Air Force later this year. The man who has been with this program since its very beginning is Paulo Gastão da Silva. Sir, thanks very much for joining us, and you should be very proud of your airplane. Yes, uh, we are indeed very proud, and uh, every day we see the progress of the campaign for development and certification, and uh, we are happy to see all the requirements being confirmed. Um, one of the things, um, you know, you guys have been on a very, very intensive development program. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, first flight was in February 2015. Um, you guys have been hitting one hurdle after another, uh, whether you were doing spray testing, whether you've been doing some dry hookups now with F-5 fighters that are in the Brazilian inventory. Um, this aircraft is designed to take gas, to be a transport, but also to be a tanker aircraft. Work us through some of the major accomplishments you guys have had, especially since we spoke at Farnborough last year, and also what are some of the big hurdles to come? Okay, well, since last year, we uh, continued the test campaign as planned, and this year we had, uh, I would say, two important uh, sub, uh, subsets of the campaign. One related to crosswind and tailwind certification tests, and another with the first air to air refueling in dry contacts, as you mentioned. Uh, we keep uh, flying with the uh, certification authorities, uh, aiming the initial operational clearance uh, later this year, and uh, starting the production. We are now uh, assembling the first Brazilian Air Force series production aircraft to be delivered uh, mid next year. Uh, so we are really excited about the progress of the program be it from the development standpoint or the ramp up of the industrialization. Um, this has very much been a partnership between you and the Brazilian Air Force. They're helping underwrite obviously some of the development costs, but you guys also have tried to uh, change the way you design. It's an all new approach to design. It's an all new approach to construction. You're bringing in a lot of commercial uh, lessons learned from your uh, very successful commercial aircraft product. What I want to ask you first is, are, are all of the models that you had, is the flight testing demonstrating the models? Or, because you know it's not the other way around, the flight testing now is validating what your initial models were. And are there any big challenges as you go through this all new process? Well, indeed we, we use the experience we brought from the commercial side to have a military transport tanker with some of the parameters you are using to see on the commercial side in terms of availability, uh, and, and so on. Um, I think the uh, this most flight test campaign we are having is because of the many engineering tools we used from the start of the development, uh, both in terms of simulation uh, and also wind tunnel testing and a lot of uh, rig testing on the ground. So when we started flying the aircraft, we, we had to confirm the models and we have been doing so very successfully without any any big surprise and that's what uh, make us uh, follow so strictly the planning in fact. Walk us through what the next steps for the program are. Yeah, well uh, of course we will focus initially on what we have to show for the IOC so we will keep uh, doing the tests for the certification of the systems on the aircraft and performance and uh, by end of this year with the IOC we'll be able to release the aircraft to the operator with the basic set of capabilities, the, the full uh, transport capability uh, uh, accomplished and uh, some of the military capabilities too, but uh, a number of the military capabilities will yet to be uh, tested uh, from the end of this year to the end of next year for the final operational clearance. So this year, mainly certification tests aiming at the IOC. Um, when um, you guys launched this aircraft, it's uh, 26 tons, 82 troops, 
uh, and it has an envelope that, uh, or rather I should say parameters or competitive attributes very similar to the C-130Js. I know that you guys are a little bit uncomfortable with that comparison. And, uh, and, and Boeing is your partner on marketing this aircraft, I should say. Full disclosure, Boeing is also one of our sponsors. But um, talk to us a little bit about what you see as the attributes of this airplane and what you think will make it a successful tanker transport in the market. Yes, as you mentioned, we started the development based on a set of requirements established by the Brazilian Air Force that uh, owns, in fact, the uh, intellectual property on the project. And uh, this uh, set of requirements uh, have, uh, have allowed us to, uh, has allowed us to, uh, uh, to have a, a very competitive and uh, well-balanced solution because you, uh, you have the flexibility of the same aircraft uh, fulfilling a number of different missions, as you already mentioned, it, uh, able to operate from very different uh, operational scenarios, so a very rugged design uh, with a very low uh, life cycle cost, very high uh, availability, so uh, par parameters you are not uh, maybe used to for this uh, military segment of transport tanker uh, aircraft. Uh, using state-of-the-art technology, but not because it's fun, it's just to the measure it brings value to the customer. So this combination of the proper uh, uh, design uh, precautions, I think, is uh, putting us to show this very competitive aircraft to the market. What are, um, what are some of the lessons from the commercial side of the business that have helped shape how you're designing this aircraft to take cost out, not just in the manufacture and the build stage, but also in the long-term support and sustainment. Let's split the answer. The first uh, important thing I have to say is this is a brand new aircraft designed from scratch for the military segment. So when I talk about the experience we bring from the commercial side is our experience in having uh, airframe and systems uh, in good shape to show a very, very high availability, uh, being robust and uh, allowing the customer to, to take uh, all it can be taken from, from the aircraft and uh, without having to be concerned about uh, maintenance all the time, about uh, troubles to be able to operate the aircraft. So the, the experience comes from, from this side. Is, uh, from the airframe standpoint, is a fully damage tolerant airframe. So that's, that's the approach nowadays for the certification. And from the system side, we, we have uh, uh, basic systems to fly the aircraft, we, we call COTS. So this is to lower program risks and costs, of course, both for acquisition and maintenance. And then for the military systems and missions, you have a full set of military systems. Uh, from scratch, designed for the purpose. So this, this combination of a brand new design uh, using all our commercial experience um, made it possible for us to do this beautiful aircraft. Um, that's one of the questions that, that some folks are looking at this and saying, well, you know, this isn't a fully militarized airplane. Uh, it's not the same thing as a rugged combat. Uh, tactical transport. How do you answer those people who, 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 who make that suggestion that this is somehow kind of a commercial product, a little bit like a C-295, an ATR der derivative that can also carry cargo? Well, this is not a militarized aircraft. It's a true military aircraft. This is very important. As I told you before, it's a new design from scratch and uh, answering to the Air Force requirements. Air Force and, and the market, in fact, as we complement the Air Force requirements with our marked intelligence input to have an aircraft addressing the requirements uh, around the world. So it, it's a true, and we'll see it, military aircraft, able to accomplish all the many missions the operator will, operators will need to. And it does, have, does it have a short field takeoff and landing capability, or yeah. will it have it? Of course, yes. You, you can operate the KC-29 from the the same runways you are using to operate other uh, uh, medium lift aircraft, no limitations. Uh, we have a very good field performance. We dedicated a lot of time to the aerodynamic design to be able to combine very good uh, short performance with very good uh, cruise performance. 
you know we we can cruise at a very high speed with the propulsion solution we uh, have chosen for the aircraft and this combination will really bring value to the operators and you're talking about a 36,000 foot cruise altitude yeah 36,000 yeah and and what's your cruise uh, speed at that altitude well typical maximum cruise speed will be 470 uh, knots uh, true air speed the uh, flying envelope is uh, limited to 300 uh, calibrated knots airspeed uh, or Mach 0.8. So typical maximum cruise is 470 knots. Uh, now, you're proud of many, many features on this airplane. I'm going to ask you what you're proud of, but you also have two things which air crews are going to like a lot. One is it has a head. So that's good because they can go to the bathroom and they also have a kitchen so they can make hot food. So that's another key. Well, what are some of the other attributes that you're so proud of as you guys were engineering this airplane? Uh, we are indeed proud of all the design we performed. Uh, in addition to the more visible toilet and galley, uh, I would say we designed an aircraft to, to have the warfighters get into the destination in, in good condition to, to engage uh, immediately, so we can cruise up to 36,000 feet, but keeping the cabin altitude limited to 8,000 feet, you, you have a much lower uh, noise level, vibration level, all the comfort you need in terms of temperature, pressurization, so the warfighter will be ready for combat when, when it comes to the moment. And, and you know that we're at a real uh, airfield because you've got guys who are actually working on the airplane. Um, let me ask you uh, a question. You know, you've been in this business for a very long time. You're heading up an aircraft uh, program that was taking something that hadn't been done in a long time, a tactical transport in this space with this kind of characteristics, a lot of new technology that are going into it. You know, everybody is trying to figure out what are lessons learned? What's the best way to approach a complex program like this and succeed, especially in the very compressed timeline that you guys have been shooting for? Mm -hmm. What are some of the keys? What have you learned to driving, building, and executing a successful complex acquisition program? Well, I would say this is part of the experience we brought from, from other Embraer programs. Uh, we have in the company what we call the uh, integrated uh, product design process, uh, where we have from the beginning all the specialists from maintainability, producibility, engineering, uh, structures, um, all guys you need to, to have an integrated design to be sure you do not design an aircraft someone will not be able to keep flying after so uh, in this in this same uh, integrated design process we use a lot of engineering tools as I mentioned before uh, we performed uh, eight different uh, wind tunnel campaigns for this uh, project and we worked a lot of uh, simulation and computer models that's why when we start flying, we are in good shape to uh, not, not to have uh, big surprises. That's the point. And what was your approach to risk? You know, where were you willing to take risk and where were you willing not to take any risk at all? Well, we have our own uh, risk management process in, in the company. And uh, we identify from the beginning and we keep it alive all, all during the development. And uh, our process uh, asks for... Uh, given uh, types of uh, solutions to be defined and in place uh, before you enter that phase to mitigate the risks you identified. So it's, it's a quite robust uh, risk management process and uh, it has been uh, proving <laughs> good enough, I would say. And one last question. You have two prototypes now, but you have a production aircraft. What's the big difference between the prototype and the production aircraft? Or are you seeking to try to make them all the same all the way through the program? Well, generally, the configuration is the same. Uh, all five airframes, because we also have the two uh, test vehicles for the ground structural tests, the, the static and fatigue tests. And all five airframes ha have been uh, uh, manufactured and, and built using the same uh, Toolings, processes, the assembly line is the same, so we, we are now doing the aircraft number five in the line uh, from this standpoint, and there is no big change. The configuration is basically the same because we started from the beginning to fulfill the full set of requirements. Gastao, thank you so very much and best of luck on the program. Welcome, I thank you for the opportunity.
Thank you.